Hello, viewers, and welcome to our lecture series on biological techniques. This lecture will be on techniques and benthic studies. Now, what are benthic organisms? Benthic organisms are organisms that spend much of their time at the bottom of the river, stream, or lake. They are actually found at the bottom of the river, stream, or lake, either in the tidal mass or below the tidal mass. They fall into two categories, and these two categories are the animal components that are called the zoobenthos and the plant components that are called the phytobenthos. We are going to look at the, the macro zoobenthos specifically in this our study. And here are some examples of the macro zoobenthos. Uh, here we have a blue crab, Kalinectis amicola, that's usually found at the bottom of the water body, either, either at the tidal zone or even at the subtidal zone. This is uh, the snapping shrimp, Alpheus potenderi, then uh, Gonopsus pelli. They are actually organisms that, have, that inhabit the tidal zone in the mangrove ecosystem. We have the Uka tangeri, that's the fiddler crab, which is also an example of the macro zoobenthus. At crabs of species and many others. Benthic invertebrates have two categories, namely the subtidal benthic macroinvertebrates and the intertidal benthic macroinvertebrates. They have two categories, the subtidal and the intertidal. The subtidal benthic macroinvertebrates are those that are permanently covered by water. The ones that are permanently covered by water are called subtidal macrozubenthos, while the ones that are found in the area that's permanent, that is periodically exposed when the tide ebbs is said to be the intertidal benthos. Now, here is a typical example of where we can find some subtidal benthos in the middle of the river. Those benthic organisms that are found at the bottom of the middle part of the river or even close to the shore, but that are covered by water are said to be subtidal benthos. Okay, then on the other hand, the intertidal benthic macroinvertebrates are described as bottom dwelling animals that are found at the intertidal region of a river. The intertidal macroinvertebrates, the intertidal benthic macroinvertebrates are those ones that are found at the intertidal region of a river. They are found around the intertidal region of the, of the river. The intertidal zone is defined as a narrow strip of territory, which is air, land, sea interface, and lies between the tidal marks of all beaches. It lies between the tide marks of all beaches. The intertidal zone exists on rocky shores, sanded beaches, and mud flats. The intertidal is divided into the high, mid and, light and low intertidal zone. The intertidal zone of the river is divided into the high, mid and low intertidal zones. Okay, so here is a picture that's showing the intertidal zone. The low intertidal zone is the area that uh, when at the ebb tide is exposed and uh, short, uh, just shortly uh, around this uh, water is said to be the intertidal zone, the low intertidal, then the mid intertidal zone is midway into land, and then the high intertidal zone is up, up stream, up the, the intertidal zone. Now, in this picture too, we have the low intertidal zone just around where the water is saturating to the mid intertidal zone somewhere around here, and then the high intertidal zone that's marked by plants at the fringes. Now, I want to look at the procedure for the collection, preservation, and identification of benthos. Procedure for the collection, preservation, and identification of benthic organisms or benthos. We need the following reagents 10% rose bengal and 10% formalin. The rose bengal is used for staining, for staining living tissues, while the formalin is used for preservation. Then, the following apparatus are required. The grab is also used, and it's used for subtidal benthic sampling. 
It's usually called the Ekman's graph, like this one here. The Ekman's graph is used for subtitle sampling, while the uh, quadrat is used for intertidal sampling. The quadrat is used for intertidal sampling. Also need graded fleet of sieves, graded fleet of sieves. The sieves are of 0 0.5, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and 5.0 millimeter mesh sizes. So sieves are also required. Then dissecting microscope and the hand lens, as well as a bucket, is also required. And appropriate identification keys for the identification. So I want to look at the procedure for the collection, preservation, and identification of this basic organisms. The first step is that expected to collect a known volume of benthic material, that's the sediment, along with the benthic organisms using a graph. That's for subtitle benthos, use a graph to collect the sediment along with the benthic organisms. Or in the intertidal sampling, use a quadrat, which is thrown at random. For subtitle sampling, lower the graph to the bottom of the water body. Now, this, is, uh, this was what we did when we went to the field for an environmental impact assessment. The grab is lowered until, and, and as you lower it, you release the rope until it gets to the bottom of the river. Okay, it gets to the bottom of the river. The grab then automatically digs the sediments containing the benthos and is drawn upwards. You now draw it upwards into the boat and the contents of the grab are then sieved. You now sieve the contents of the grab. Now here, these pictures are showing how the graph is then brought out. You drag it out until, and then you now turn the contents into a bucket. The benthic, the benthic, the sediments along with the benthic organisms are then turned into a bucket and later sieved. In intertidal sampling, the quadrat is thrown at random at the edge of the tide at the intertidal region of the water body, it could be a river an estuary or an ocean, okay? The quadrat is thrown at random, you throw it, and wherever it lands, you now um, proceed to uh, collect the samples. In intertidal sampling, the, when the quadrat falls on a particular area, the epifauna is collected first. You now begin to pick the epifauna, such as periwinkles, some crabs, and some other organisms that could be found at the surface. The organisms that are found on the surface are said to be the epifauna, while the ones that are inside the soil are said to be the infauna. So the epifauna are first collected by hand. We collect them and put them into a container that has a rose bengal and formalin already for preservation. Then, and the area covered by the quadrat is marked. You now use your hand to mark around the edges of the quadrat. The quadrat is eventually removed and a shovel or spade is then used to dig the soil to a depth of about 20 centimeters to collect the infant. After marking the area of the quadrat, a shovel or a spade is then used to dig the soil to collect the infant, to collect the infant. Usually it should not exceed 20 centimeters in, uh, deep should not exceed a depth of 20 centimeters because beyond that uh, depth, micro uh, benthic organisms cannot be found because of high concentration of hydrogen sulfide, or they cannot really survive in such depth. So it's, it's usually 20 centimeters deep. Then after collecting the samples for, in, for intertidal sampling, you now collect, take the samples to the lower low intertidal zone where there's water to sieve the contents, okay? But for uh, subtitle sampling, right there in the middle of the river, you can turn them into a sieve and sieve. So you sieve the sediment using graded fleet of sieves, usually see, uh, sieves of 0 0.5, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 5.0 millimeter mesh sizes, and then used to sieve the samples, just as it is shown here, this sieve, is being used to sieve the samples by moving it to and fro. You move the sieve uh, while it's, it's touching the water, you move it to and fro so that the sediments will go off while the benthic organisms are retained. Then after that, you now stain the screened residue, that is the benthic organisms containing the benthic farmer, in 
10% rose bengal and 10% formalin as preservative. Okay, now put the residues in a container and preserve with 10% uh, formalin and add rose bengal, which will stain the living tissues pink. Right, to stain the living tissues to be pink in color. In the laboratory and in the laboratory and the benthic fauna present, be isolated. You now take the, when you get to the laboratory, you now isolate the benthic macrofauna. The students change and share them into various types, like all the periwinkles, the uh, foscatus will go to one side, Pachymenena fusca one side, Pachymenena uh, orata who should be taken to one side. And then the crabs, different types of crabs, the fiddler crabs, Uka tangerium should be taken to one side. And then uh, Pachygrapsus species, then Gonosus uh, peli, Sesama Uzabi, Sesama albati, different types, just as they appear physically differently. You put them into different uh, areas. Then you now identify, identify and enumerate the fauna using appropriate identification keys appropriate identification keys are then used. For some species, a dissecting microscope or hand lens will be required to aid proper identification. There are some species like some polychaetes that will require the use of uh, hand lens or dissecting microscope to properly identify them. And such species use, you put them in the stage of the dissecting microscope and view through the dissecting microscope to see those distinctive features to enable you identify them. In some cases, you may also need a hand lens to look properly, to properly identify these organisms. After identification, you now record the number of organism count, organisms counted and express the number of organisms per unit volume, that is in cubic centimeters of the sediment sampled. You express that. And then the figures are then used for further calculations. Thank you very much for watching. I I'm very sure this video may have taught you how to collect, preserve, and identify benthic samples. And I would urge you to also subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch more very educative videos in the future.